reading to you from 1 Peter, the first chapter, the 7th verse, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found into praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Good evening, my dear listening friends. Again, this evangelist Cecil Moe. <clears throat> As you know, I'm a converted alcoholic, gave my heart to Christ over 49 years ago in a pastor's home in Seattle, Washington. <clears throat> One year later, God called me to preach, and I've been sharing Christ ever since. My wife and I have been down for the last two or three weeks. I don't know what it is, but we've been down. But <clears throat> we went uh, to uh, Saturday, yesterday, we drove down to Olney Springs, and to hold a service at the Only Springs Prison Sunday morning. And so right now we should be on our way back from the prison. Pray for us that God will give us the strength and the health to do all the things that we're supposed to do. I do appreciate it when I ask you people to pray for them, and you do. I'm not very important. No, I know I'm not. But boy, listen, I'm smart enough to know that if people aren't praying for you, you're not going to go very far. Well, I'll be with you for 29 minutes. Kick off your slippers, sit back and relax. Pour you a glass of tea or a hot coffee. And let's see what the Lord has for us, okay? <coughs> Well, friends, I've labeled my little chit-chat tonight. Have you had the privilege of walking by faith yet? You say, what? What are you talking about, Cecil? Well, you would be surprised at the people who call themselves Christians who have never had to walk by blind faith. Now, I would like to say tonight that I would like to say I was one of the men of great faith. I can't do that, but I do have faith in the Lord, and I do know that there's a lot of people tonight listening to my voice who's going through a lot of trials and tribulations. Your faith has been tested, and sometimes you almost feel like throwing in a towel. Well, beloved, let me tell you something. Don't do it. Don't throw in the towel. God is faithful. He sure is. You know, when I was in San Francisco trying to go to seminary in, in uh, Oakland, uh, I had had the privilege of introducing several people to Christ. Now, we absolutely were trying to go to Riverside, California to enroll me in uh, uh, college so I could probably be a better preacher. Well, I had uh, one, two, three, four... I had four children, and uh, I don't think we had over $20 in our pocket. And uh, I visited this home of these people I introduced to Jesus. And she said to me, Cecil, when are you going to Riverside to go into college? I said, well, as soon as I get enough money together to, to go down there. And I got ready to leave, and she handed me an envelope, and then it was a check for $50. Now, this, you may think, is a bunch of hooey, but it's a fact. I told my wife, I said, well, let's load up our what little possessions we have in our trailer and load the children up, and tomorrow let's head for Riverside, California. She said, with $50 in our pocket? I said, absolutely. Now, friends, I don't know if you know what a, a boot is and a tire, and you don't have them anymore, but there is such a thing. We had a tire. We had a Chrysler New Yorker, and on the front tire, there was a, there was a, there's a hole in it. You could, all, you could see the tube. Well, I knew I couldn't take off to Riverside with that old tube sticking out there, so I pulled into a gas station and asked him 
if he would uh, put a boot in that tire. And he laughed at me. He said, what are you talking about? I said, just what I said. I need a boot so that I can get on the road. He said, sir, I'll do that. But I'll guarantee you, I'll guarantee you, when that jack comes down, it's going to explode. And I said, that's what we have to do. I cannot afford to buy a tire. And I'm headed for Riverside. He said, Riverside, California. I said, that's right. Going to school. Going to be a preacher. God called me to preach. He put that thing, that boot in there. Now, this is on the front end of the car. You know, thump, 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 thump. He put that thing on, let the jack down, and it worked. All right. Now, we went down to a, a, a little delicatessen, and we bought a couple pounds of lunch meat. We bought uh, a loaf of bread and some 7-Up uh, and some pop, and we headed off for Riverside, California. Now, mind you, I said we had $50 in our pocket. Well, <clears throat> I was so sure that God was leading that I wouldn't have been afraid of nothing. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to be a preacher. God called me to preach. And you know what? We got to Riverside, California. We sure did. Now, this is where the faith comes in. You're not going to believe this, but you can talk to my wife later if you'd like to, to see if it's the truth. We went to do a real estate office, and I asked the man if there's any houses to rent around there. Oh, yes, there's a few houses, and they went from $60, $70 a month. Now, get this. I never told that man anything about my finances, not one word. I'm here to try to rent a house. And did you know what he did? He came up, and he said, you know, you're coming here to go to school to be a, uh, to be a preacher? I said, yes. He said, uh, the Lord laid it on my heart to give you this $10 bill. Now, we went to this motel that night. And I forget what the motel was, six, seven, eight dollars $8. And we went out and we bought uh, two potatoes. We bought a half a dozen eggs. And we bought something else. And we went to the motel and we had a nice feed that night. We put the children to bed and... My wife said, Cecil, <clears throat> I don't want to bust your bubble, but what do you plan on paying for that, how, pay for that house that you're supposed to rent tomorrow? You know, I said, it didn't, it's never entered my mind. Now get this, folks. I want you to picture this. My wife went to bed. I went out and I sat down in the front seat of that old Chrysler. And I said, dear Lord, I'm sure stupid. I didn't think about renting a house and about the money. Lord, what am I going to do? And God looked down at this simple-minded guy and said, boy, I, I got to help him. The Lord laid a man on my heart that I knew when I was a little fella. In fact, his daughter and I were just like brothers and sisters. He was a multimillionaire. I called him on the phone and I said to him, he said, Cecil Mo, I haven't seen you for 10 years. Where are you at? I said, down in Riverside, California. What you doing down there? I said, well, I come down to go to Bible college. God called me to preach. He said, you're kidding. He used to know. He knew I stole watermelons and things like that. Well, how can I help you? I said, I need some money to rent a house. Well, whatever you need. I said, well, I don't know, between 60 and $75. He said, uh, go down to Western Union in the morning, and it'll be there. We rented that house. Friends, I drove that Chrysler another two months on that boot in that tire. And when I was over to the hospital one day visiting somebody, I just got out of the car and kabam, that tire went and the guard went for his pistol. <laughs> but friends, listen, it was a joy unspeakable. I recall one time I was a pastor of a small church in Anacortes, Washington. They paid me $100 a month if the money came in. I naturally had to work. I'd bought an old beat-up little old tar kettle, and I had an old beat-up truck, and I'm out roofing. Selling roofing. Well, 
Friends, my equipment wasn't good enough to compete with anybody. I came home one night. My wife and I and children were sitting at the dinner table. We bowed our head, and I said, Oh, God, I need enough money to buy a, a better truck and a better kettle so I can compete with these other people, so I can make a living for my family, so I can preach in this church. And you know my heart. My wife almost jumped out of her skin. How did you? You prayed that God would give you, would would supply you with eight hundred dollars. I said that's right. Now, friends, listen. The next day, I went out and I sold a big job, a big hot job. Well, I called Seattle. I ordered this little pumper kettle, and I went down. <clears throat> after the job was done, I bought a a truck that used to belong to the Salvation Army. I bought that truck, and I went down, and I got a call from Seattle saying, well, your kettle's here. Come on down and pick it up. I went down there to the place. And I walked in there, and I'd laid $800 on the counter, and the, and the uh, man said, what's this? I said, it's a down payment on my kettle. He said, you can't do that. That kettle cost $2,000 or something like that. Well, I hadn't planned on that. Did you know what he did, dear friends? He got on the phone and he called the manufacturing plant in San Francisco and told him there's a preacher in there and he wanted some credit on a kettle. He had a few hundred dollars down. And did you know that manufacturing company called the first Western Bank in San Francisco and they said, yes, you can, we'll, we'll, we'll loan you the money and you can pay us back at $24 a month. Friends, listen to me. I don't know what your situation is tonight. I have no idea. I know things are tough. Believe me, I know it in my own ministry. Financially, it's tough. And, and, and on my own, to, just to survive. And we're not doing a good job of that, but I ain't complaining. I'm not complaining about that. But what I'm trying to say, you have got to exert faith. You've got to exert faith. You've got to believe God. He said that he who come to the Lord must believe that he's a reward of those who diligently seek after him. Now, what is he asking you to <clears throat> do tonight? Is he, is, he, is he asking you to be a Sunday school teacher? Or is he asking you or calling you uh, as a man to be a preacher? And you say, I can't do it. Well, how do you know you can't do it? Friends, if God puts a call on you for whatever thing, for either being a Sunday school teacher, maybe God wants you to be a singer for the Lord, like my quartet. They never dreamed 18 years ago that they would be going to penitentiary Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, all these years. But God called us together and put their hearts together. And honestly, they really couldn't sing very good when they first started out. But I'll put them against any quartet in the country today. But you know what? It's not their wonderful singing. Of course, that's beautiful too. But it's their attitude. None of us get paid to go to prison. You know that. But they do it because they know that God has called us to this job. We're walking by faith. And, you know, I told you guys last week about the my uh, phone card deal. I got a hold of this company, and and uh, I'm able to uh, put out 5,000 free long-distance phone calls, minutes, 5,000 minutes, for $25. Well, you know what? I've, I'm starting to sell them now. People be, hey, this is only a one-time deal because this is a promotion, see? But... You see what God did, and he opened the door and showed us how to do it. Well, let's say you have a child in, in college, and you know they're always calling home asking for money. Well, it won't cost them but $25 for 5,000 minutes, long-distance phone call, on any phone, cell phone, any kind of phone they have. You see, friends, <clears throat> there are times when God gives us enough brains I do not like, never have, and never will like to talk about money to Christians, because that's the mostly. Hey, there's a program, there's a there's a TV station on here. If you want to see people, you think I'm crazy, 
they get up there and they ask for a thousand dollar seed offering and don't even bat an eye. You can't buy God with money. These people actually think, and they said, and you're going to get well, you're going to get healed, you're going to get this and that. They don't know that. But I do know what you can do if you walk by faith. God is faithful and he'll do what he said he will do. That's why I beg people to start tithing to the Lord, not to me, to the Lord. Because he said he wanted us to and he would reward us for it. God is not lying tonight. And he says, child, come unto me, all oh, you labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Some of you tonight I know are suffering. It's like my wife and I seem like friends these last five years. I've my two heart, three heart attacks. I just don't understand it. But that's part of my lot. And God said he'd be with me through it. And he has. Hey, I just turned 79 years old. I should be retired a long time ago. Oh, friends, how can you retire when the men and women are dying and going to hell? I don't know how they can. Some people have to retire early. But the joy that God has given me is walking my faith and telling these men and women. And I could tell you a hundred stories that would make your eyes pop out of your head that I've seen God do, not Cecil Mo, but I've seen God do it in my own life, my own ministry. You can read it in the Bible what he can do. Now, a lot of people run around looking for miracles. I am a miracle. I was a no-good drunk in Skid Row in Portland, Oregon. And one day I went to a preacher's home one morning, early, three o'clock in the morning, I went to this preacher's home, a man I've never met in my life. And I poured out my heart, and I told him I was wretched. I was unhappy. I was losing my family and everything. And he told me a love story that I will never, never forget. I pray I'll never even... Oh, listen. For God so loved Cecil Moe, that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believed him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that morning I fell upon my knees, knowing no theology. I knew I was a wretched sinner. I knew I was an alcoholic. And I knew it was too late. I knew my family. I'd never see my family again. But this wonderful, wonderful God showed me a thing or two. That morning after I left that preacher's home, I went home. My wife was packing up to leave me. She had her and her girlfriend. And I begged. I pleaded. I cried. And... God caused my wife to stop and say, maybe he's telling the truth. Well, friend, that's 49 years ago, and I keep telling that story. It really worked. If you've never walked by faith, dear friends, try it. Try it. It cannot be mounted. It can't be climbed. That's not true. What do you think the disciples thought when Jesus was there and all those people to feed and they were all hungry and nothing to feed them? How, how do you think they felt? <laughs> Jesus showed them a, a thing or two, didn't he? Plus, it was 12 baskets left over. When God does something for you, it's big. And you know what, friend? You say, Cecil, you don't know what I've done in my life. You have no idea what I've done. I'm a miserable person. I've cheated on my wife or I've cheated on my husband. I've done everything wrong. You mean to tell me that God loves me? Yes, he does. Does he love your sins? No. Does he love you a sinner? Yes. Won't you just, for a moment, just bow your head with me. If you feel the Spirit of God drawn at your heart, you can't pray this just any time you want to. If God draws you, he, and then you can pray this prayer. And here's how it goes. Oh, Father, I confess that I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, I'm opening my heart and receiving you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you get on a phone and call 303-471-8534. 303-471-8534. I'll not use your name on the air. I won't call. Uh, write and ask you for any money. I don't care where you go to church, but I am tremendously concerned where you spend eternity. 
please call if you feel I can help you. 303-471-8534.